In this video, I'm going to show you how part of speech tags work in the corpus of contemporary American English and illustrate how they can be used to help us generate the data that is the most relevant to our research questions. For example, if we were interested in distributions of the verb break, how could we differentiate this kind of break from this one? Or if we were interested in newer forms of the adjectival fly, you don't have to spend a lot of money to look fly. Yeah, How would we isolate those from the far more common verb forms or noun forms? Also, I want to talk about some of the issues and potential complications that we should look out for when we generate our data. So let's get started. Before we start using the part of speech tags in COCA, I want to very briefly give you an idea of what a part of speech tag is. A simple corpus can be composed of plain text files like this one. It's the text of Shakespeare's Hamlet, and we can use a computer to search and sort these files in various ways. We can, however, add information to that plain text file to enable the computer to recognize anything that we think is important or relevant. That information is contained in what are called tags. Here is the same clay with tags added that identify things like stage directions, speakers, and lines. For our purposes, it's not necessary for you to know anything technical about tags, but you should have a general idea of what they are. So here is an example of a sentence. And here is that same sentence after it has been tagged for parts of speech. The angle brackets identify the tags. So this bit marks the beginning of the part of speech tag. And this bit that begins with the backslash marks the end of the tag. This tag then identifies the as a determiner. This one identifies student as a noun, and so on. Although the markup can look really complicated, the idea behind it is a rather simple one. Tags embed information into the texts that we can then retrieve. In our sample sentence, the tags connect words to part of speech information. This is important partly because many words in English can function as multiple parts of speech. You can chair a committee, but you can also sit on one. You can be fast, Away first time. And, uh, but you can also fast. Death fast and prison may be over when these pictures appear. You can visit Google, but you can also Google information. So whenever we are collecting data from a corpus, we need to focus on what it is that we are searching for and do our best to limit irrelevant data that might distort our analysis. Part of speech tags are one tool that we can use to focus our searches. So let's look at how we can use them. First, you don't need to memorize the tags. On the left side of the interface, among the various search options, there is a part of speech list. Click on it and a drop-down menu will appear. When you select a particular part of speech, the tag will appear in the search field. So let's try one that I mentioned earlier, fast as a verb versus fast as an adjective. First I'll select all verbs from the drop-down menu. This will generate a V star enclosed in square brackets in the search field. This is the symbol that tells COCA to search for all verb tags. Now I'll type fast inside square brackets. I talked about this in the first video. You use square brackets to lemmatize the results. This will generate all forms of the verb in the results. Fasts, fasting, fasted, not just fast. And now we need to get our search syntax right. In COCA, if we are searching for a word tagged as a specific part of speech, we must put a period between the word and the tag without any space. This is key. You must connect the search word and the tag with a period. If you put a space between the search word and the tag, COCA will generate that search word followed by all words tagged as that part of speech. So in our case, if we put a period between fast and the verb tag, we will generate all instances of fast that are tagged as verbs. If we put a space between fast and the tag, we will generate all instances of fast followed by a verb. Here, I'll show you. Here is what we generate with a period in our search string.
and here is what we get with the space. This kind of search string generates collocations, and we'll use these a lot. I'll talk more about collocations in the next video. For now, let's start by looking at instances of fast tagged as a verb. We'll type in the search string and change the display to chart, so we can look at distributions across text types. Here we find that as a verb, fast is used most frequently in the magazine text type, but is also quite frequent in academic text types. By clicking on the header, we find that in magazines, it's most frequent in the religion subtype. This shouldn't be surprising as fasting is a common religious practice. If we look at the distribution in academic writing, we find that although it is frequent in the philosophy religion subtype, it is slightly more frequent in medicine. As I noted in the first video, it is always important to examine your concordance data. So if we were doing an analysis of these distributions, we would need to look at the keywords in context. If we click on the bar of the chart, COCA will give us the concordance lines from that part of the corpus. The first few lines seem to be using the verb to indicate the religious ritual and its implications for patients with conditions like diabetes. Then, however, we have an entirely different use. In these lines, it describes molecules like blood and lipids in a particular metabolic state after a person hasn't eaten overnight or has completely digested a meal. In this context, then, fast has a very technical meaning in addition to the more common one. Now let's look at distributions of fast as an adjective. We'll leave fast in brackets so that we look for all forms including faster and fastest. Here the distribution is similar but slightly different. It is also most common in magazine, but it is far more common overall. One way of exploring these distributions would be to look at the verbs and nouns that collocate with fast in the different text types, which we will do in the next video. Okay, before we finish, I want to call your attention to a couple of things. The first is the importance of checking your concordance data. For example, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that fly can be used as an adjective to refer to dress, style, or self-presentation. Let's see what we get if we search for fly tagged as an adjective. We find that most of the entries for adjectival fly are related to things like fly fishing or baseball rather than looking fly. But if we look through our concordance data, we find examples of what we are looking for. We would overrepresent the occurrences of adjectival fly if we didn't interrogate our quantitative results. The final thing you should be aware of is the nature of automated tagging and the ambiguity of some of the part of speech categories. A tagging system like clause is remarkably accurate. This is particularly true with closed lexical categories and highly frequent tokens like determiners. However, some lexical categories are notoriously ambiguous and difficult to tag automatically. Again, we can look at our results from adjectival fly. The concordance lines where fly collocates with fishing is referencing this, invent this, ball this, and swatter this. And in these instances, fly is functioning to modify nouns like fishing, vents, ball, or swatter. Although in these cases fly appears before the noun in attributive position, that doesn't mean that fly is formally an adjective. By form, adjectives have comparative forms. You can have flyer clothes than someone, but you can't have flyer fishing. Also, adjectives can appear in predicative as well as attributive position. In other words, they can come after linking verbs like to be or to appear. So you can have fly clothes, and those clothes can be fly. You can use a fly swatter, but that fly swatter can't be fly. So always be aware of what you're looking for. Is it okay to have data where fly is a modifier, but is really a noun by form? Or do you only want examples of fly where it is strictly an adjective? Be aware then of the limits of part of speech tags. Most often this won't be a problem, but sometimes, particularly if you're looking at a small data set, you might need to sort through your results. Okay, let's review. Many words in English can function as multiple parts of speech. Part of speech tags, therefore, can help us refine our searches and generate the data that we are looking for. 
In COCA, there is a part of speech drop-down list that has all of the tags available for our searches. To search for a word tagged as a specific part of speech, put a period between the word and the tag without any space. If you are looking for all forms of a word, don't forget to limitize your results by enclosing the word in square brackets. That's it. Thanks for watching.